Every complex machine can be broken into a combination of six simpler machines. Those machines being the wheel and axle, wedge, lever, pulley, incline, plane, and screw. Um, wheel and axle is pretty obvious what it would be. Um, a wedge is anything that moves and will, will cut something like an axe or a knife or a sword. Um, those things would be wedges they wedge inside uh, something and usually split it apart but it could also be like a, a uh, door stop as well it doesn't have to cut a lever is anything that pivots around a what we call fulcrum so a lever would be something like a wheelbarrow um, because it pivots around the wheel um, it could be a jack for a car could be a seesaw uh, it could also be anything a swing like a bat or a broom uh, or a hockey stick a pulley is anything with a rope that goes around a wheel. So things like uh, your blinds uh, for your windows would might, might have a pulley system. The, the curtains for a stage would have a pulley system. The flagpole would have a pulley system. A ramp or incline plane is a stationary object in which we move things up that stationary object. So it would be a wheelchair ramp, but be also anything with a drain, like a bathtub, a sink, um, your roads, which have a drainage system. Um, they are on a slope and the water runs down the slope. And then a screw is really just an inclined plane wrapped around a post. It would be anything with threads on it. Uh, that could be from, of course, you know, bolts and screws that you use in woodworking or, uh, you know, mechanics. Um, it could also be something like a bottle cap. Now, a, a simple machine does not increase the amount of work that you do. In fact, because of friction, the amount of work done with a simple machine is less than the work done without. Um, and so, it, again, the work that you do not only has to lift the object, let's say the, the lever to lift up a car, a car jack, <clears throat> not only do you have to do work to lift it, but also you have to do work to overcome the friction. So a simple machine makes you do more work. So what's the benefit of a simple machine? Well, one thing is that a simple machine will change the direction of the force. Um, for example, a pulley or a lever. lever. Um, doesn't seem like a big deal at first glance. However, let's say that you have a barn and you have to get hay into the loft of the barn. And so what you do is you're going to make a pulley here and you'll have a person stand at the bottom and lift the hay or whatever materials you want to get up into that loft um, from the bottom. It's much safer to be on the bottom and pull down than to be standing up here at the door and pull upward. Safer and easier. The other thing that it can do is increase the force. This is what we mostly think about with simple machines. Um, in this case, we can lift heavier loads, heavier, heavier objects, like lifting that car. Um, I can lift that car with a jack, whereas I can't if I don't use a simple machine. Um, and so the trade-off, though, is you can exert a larger amount of force, but you'll move it a smaller distance. So think about how often you have to move the handle of a jack on a car. So here's your car. And here's your jack with your handle. You have to move that handle up and down multiple times in order to move the car up a just a little bit. So yes, it requires less force, but you have to exert that force over a larger distance. Um, so there's always that trade-off. Um, the other thing it can do is increase the distance, like a catapult. So if I want to launch something in the air, I exert a tremendous force at this end to lift a very small force at this end, a small object. Um, however, the trade-off again, work is force times distance. So the trade-off again is I have to exert a large force a small distance and I lift a smaller object, but I lift it a larger distance, and it moves very far. So there's always that trade-off with force and distance. You can exert a small force over a large distance, or you can exert a large force over a small distance. There's two values that we calculate with simple machines, the first one being efficiency. Efficiency is always a percent of what you get out to what you put in. Um, when there is no friction, our efficiency is 100%. We get as much work out as we put in. However, with friction, we get less work out than we put in. 
and the efficiency is the ratio of how much we get out to what we put in. So if it's 80%, for every 100 joules that I put in, I only get 80 joules out from the machine. Um, we talk about efficiency not in terms of work out to work in, um, when we talk about gas mileage. So again, we have miles per gallon. What we get out, we get out 30 miles. Compared to what we put in, we put in one gallon of gas. So it's always a ratio of what we get out to what we put in. In this case, we're talking about work, though. The last value that we can calculate is mechanical advantage. This is the number of times that a machine can multiply the force that we exert. So let's think about that car that we lift with our jack. Let's say that the car is a weight of 2,000 pounds and it only takes us 100 pounds of force to lift that car. So in this case, I can lift 20 times more than I could without that jack. So our mechanical advantage is 20. No units on that. We just lift 20 times more with this jack than we could without. Now under ideal situations, in other words without friction, the mechanical advantage could be calculated by dividing the amount that we move things divided by the amount that the object moves. So how far do we move the, the handle of the jack divided by how far the car moves up? Um, that would be your upper limit for your mechanical advantage. Without friction, that would be what your mechanical advantage would be. So that is your best value, your upper limit for mechanical advantage.